Are you looking for true personal freedom? The freedom to design the life you truly desire? Then you're absolutely in the right place. True personal freedom comes from when you take 100% responsibility and control of your money and your mind. Here, you're going to learn ideas, tips, and wisdom that's gonna help you bridge the gap from where you are now to your dream life in the future. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. Hello, and welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, let's talk about personal freedom. Let's talk about your personal freedom, which is what this podcast, what I try to talk about a lot, right? So the idea between uh, the control of your money and your mind is how you're going to find personal freedom in your life. So whether that's financial freedom, whether that's time freedom, uh, whatever freedom you're looking for, right? It all starts with the control of your money and your mind. So when I started out on this quest for personal freedom for myself, my biggest uh, thing that I was looking for was time freedom. I was working retail uh, 70-ish hours a week, I would say. I was working first, second, sometimes third shift and almost every shift uh, during you know the same week, right? It would it'd be the nonstop all the time. I was in retail management. And so I was literally on call uh, at all ends of the day, meaning morning, noon, and night. I'd get calls in the middle of the night as well. So with that said, my biggest push was for time freedom. And I had and wanted to figure out what I was going to do to get there as quickly as I possibly could. So for my personal freedom, what I needed to do and what I'm going to uh, challenge you to do today, starting today, if you don't know what this is, is to get a specific down to the penny if you possibly can, but definitely near to your nearest dollar. What is your freedom number? So what that is or what that means is what is it? required for you to live the lifestyle that you desire. Now, when I say desire, it doesn't necessarily mean the dream lifestyle. That's could be in the future, right? The number I want you to come up with today is the number that re is required for you to basically keep the current lifestyle that you have today. With that number, you can then start reverse engineering how to get uh, out of the rat race that you're in, whether it's a W-2 job that you don't like, uh, it can be anything, right? But without knowing what that number is, you're not going to know what's required for that to happen. Now, one thing that I talk about a lot is the uh, fun part about playing the cash flow board game. And actually, if you're watching this on video, I have it right over here off my shoulder here, the box cover for that. We play that game in a, as a family, maybe not as often as we uh, had in the past. But what uh, we did do is we did play it quite a bit over when I was first starting this process of trying to get personal freedom in my life. And one thing that you learn in that game without uh, spoiling anything for anybody that hasn't played yet. But one thing that I learned in that game was that you need to try to accumulate as many uh, dollars as you possibly can. Right. So whether that's through your investments, I know uh, one tendency uh, when you're playing the game and then real life too, because I used to be this way as well, is that when dollars come into your life through your job or through whatever source you're getting them from, you want to take those dollars and pay down uh, different debts as, past, as fast as you possibly can. And that is one thing that uh, I learned through the game. And that was one thing that I then applied into my life where I stopped doing that. And I started to take those dollars and instead of investing them into paying down debt right away, I used those dollars to then invest in other things that spit off more cash, whether it was into my own businesses, whether it was into uh, cash flow real estate, whatever that was, I took those dollars that were coming into my life. And instead of paying down debt, I would pay down or buy, excuse me, uh, or put into investing into my own businesses or into cash flow producing real estate. Now, as I did that, the dollars that were then spit off from there is what I would then use to potentially pay down the debts that I needed to. But the point is, is that you need to get a little bit more comfortable with holding uh, debt in your life. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing. We've discussed that on the podcast before. Debt can be used as a tool for good, and it can be used as a tool 
for not so good. Okay. So that's just going to be a matter of how you use that tool, but getting comfortable having it is not a bad idea. It's not all that is bad. I know there's some folks teaching that, 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 that is the case. And I'm here to argue that that is not the case. Uh, holding debt is not a, necessarily a bad thing, but you need to come up with what your freedom number is. Now, as I get, cl as I got closer, so I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. As I got closer to my freedom number, when I realized that I was going to be able to step away from my W-2 job and everything was going to be fine, I then started to eliminate some of the debts that I didn't necessarily need to be paying. Uh, and that was towards the end. That wasn't at the very beginning. So whether it was uh, car payments or uh, specific things, different payments, I mean, we all have them, right? Different payments, you're paying for maybe a cell phone or you're paying for uh, whatever, things that aren't necessarily uh, needed for you to survive. But the last few things that you need to take care of to get yourself onto that personal freedom that you're looking for, the time freedom, that's when you need to take care of those. As you get closer to the end, not necessarily worrying about them as you get closer to or at the beginning. So focus on generating the cash flow, whether it's through real estate or, or assets in general, right? It can be businesses. That's how I did it personally. I, I through my Amazon e-commerce business, along with when I first left the W2 world, I actually started driving Uber and Lyft. And I did that for about a year, maybe a year and a half. I would drive during the mornings, um, obviously collect um, fees or obviously through the apps, right? They would pay me through the, the app, the service that I was providing. And then in the afternoons, I was building my business. And that's how I was able to leave the W2 world. I then was able to then take some of those proceeds and invest in some cash flowing per, uh, cash flow producing real estate as well, which still cash flow to this day also. So the idea though, was that I didn't take the dollars that I was making or earning and paying down debt at first. I would take those dollars and use it to build my business. So even with the Uber and Lyft, that was considered in a business as well. I went out and purchased a car. I was able to deduct it and I ran it just like a business. And I would encourage you to do the same. It can be with anything. So same thing with the Amazon business that I had with the e-commerce business. I ran that from the house. And so I was able to deduct things from my taxes, from my profits that I was earning from my businesses that quickly added up to the point where I was able to make enough to leave that W-2 world. And I haven't looked back. And I know that if you can do that and focus on your freedom number first, find out what that number is. And everybody's going to be a little bit different. Yours might be a little higher than mine. Yours might be a little lower than mine. That's fine. But the point is, is that you know what your freedom number is. And then you can go to work to replacing that through a side hustle of some kind. Uh, if you need some different ideas for businesses, you can reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to let's discuss it, right? I've mentioned several times on, on this podcast about the Amazon e-commerce business that I've built. And then I help people begin themselves, but then also uh, internet marketing uh, or uh, network marketing, excuse me, would be another opportunity that is not necessarily difficult to get into, but it could be uh, very profitable if you're able to do the work and work the system. And we can talk about those kinds of things as well. If you're curious about uh, real estate, I can give you my experience. And if I don't have the answers as far as to the level that you're looking, I, I have friends that, that, definitely invest at a higher level than I do that I could definitely run ideas by them to find out for you exactly what it's going to take to help you learn the things necessary to get you closer to that freedom number. But first we need to figure out what that freedom number is, right? So take the time, add up all your bills, add up your current lifestyle and figure out what that number is for you that you need to begin replacing with some other sources of income other than your W-2 job right? We've got to get out of the mindset of thinking that you need to go to work to earn money, right? And we need to start flipping that into making money in your businesses. So hopefully that serves you today. Uh, work on your freedom number. Take some time this week, sit down and jot down all the bills that you have at your current level of lifestyle and figure out to the penny if you possibly can, but definitely round it up to the nearest uh, dollar or, or $10 or something like that and find out exactly what your number is and then start re uh, reverse engineering how you're going to get yourself out to your personal freedom. And I encourage you to start that just as soon as you possibly can. As soon as you hit uh, done with this episode would be the best time. So let's get started. So go out there, have a fantastic day. Hopefully that serves you today. And I look forward to connecting you with you again on the next episode. Until then, bye now.
Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. I hope you found a ton of value in this episode. If so, I'd really appreciate a five-star review, and you can also share it with your family and friends. And as my mentor Jim Roden shared with me, in order to have more, you must first become more. And in order to become more, you must work harder on yourself than you do on your job. So go out there today and work harder on yourself to become more and build the life of your dreams. Until next time, my friends. Thank you.